Hi everybody! In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to build an isolation cabinet for your guitar amp. If you don't know what that is, let me show you. So an isolation cabinet is essentially just a large soundproof box that you put a guitar cabinet inside and that way you can crank up that nice tube head you've got all the way to 10 and not have to worry about your eardrums bleeding. This is helpful for any situation in which noise is an issue, such as you live in an apartment, have a baby sleeping upstairs, or your neighbors are just really crotchety and like complaining about your excessive noise. There's no right way to build an isolation cabinet, so I'm just going to tell you how I built mine. I made a lot of mistakes along the way that I'm going to talk about, so that way you don't have to make them too. Let's hear what it sounds like. Here I've got my PV Triple X with the clean channel set to about to all the way and master volume set to about half of the way. As you can hear, that's pretty quiet. Let's have some fun, go all the way to the Ultra Channel. So as you can hear, pretty quiet. For soundproofing, there's a number of different options you can use. You can go with acoustic foam, rigid fiberglass, or acoustic insulation. I chose something called Rockwool, which is a type of acoustic insulation. It is known for being very fireproof and very sound absorbent. It's also a lot cheaper than acoustic foam. I called my local hardware store to see what they had in stock. They had something called Rock Soul, which was 3 inches thick, came in 2x4 sheets, and had 8 sheets per package. To build the physical box part of it, any sort of strong, sturdy wood should do fine. I used something called MDF, which is medium density fiberboard. This is a sort of engineered wood that's made from wood fibers being compressed really tightly. It has the benefit of being a lot denser, which means that it's going to resist the sound vibrations a lot more. I called my hardware store and not only could they provide it, they could also cut it to size for me. Lastly, we're going to need all of our miscellaneous hardware bits. To keep the MDF together, I opted just to use some corner braces. This is because I don't really have a lot of access to tools, clamps, or anything else that is a little bit better for woodworking. I think the corner braces worked out pretty well though. We're going to need hinges for the lid, a handle, as well as casters. Casters not only are helpful to move the cabinet around easily, but they'll also help decouple it from the floor. So as the cabinet vibrates, it won't rattle the whole floor at the same time. Step one of building your isolation cabinet is to take nice measurements with a tape measure or just Google it, because that's going to be a lot quicker. So I decided to grab some graph paper and do this by hand, although there's plenty of tools on the internet that should be able to help you if you don't have access to graph paper or just don't want to. Got my uh, spacing, which is about one square is equal to three inches. Sorry, my scale. Got the dimensions of the amp are 30 by 15 by 18. So I figured the inside space should be about 30 by 24 looking down from the top in order to fit the amp and a few microphones, as well as maybe 18 inches tall just because that's how the, high the amp is. So I got my drawing that shows 24 by 30 for the inside looking down, and 30 by 18 looking at it front on. I also went through and drew the sheets of Roxel themselves. So I know they're all 24 by 48, or 2 feet by 4 feet, and I've got 8 of them. So what I'm doing is as I draw each piece of soundproofing in relation to the cabinet, I'll also draw it out on these sheets of Roxel so I'll know exactly how to cut the piece. I keep this on hand when I'm actually cutting the rock sole in person, and that'll help me save a lot of effort later. And I won't be accidentally cutting things where I shouldn't, or I won't mess up as much. When I did this, I actually messed up a little bit, and I'm drawing now the front view. I had some pieces that were a little bit large, and they stuck out on top when I added the lid. You'll see that later. But it's helpful just to keep that in mind as well. Once we've got everything planned out, we're ready to start building. Go through and mark on each of your four side pieces where you want the corner braces to go. 
draw out a little point on them where you're going to drill a pilot hole, drill that pilot hole, and attach the corner braces to one side. Go through and do this with two parallel sides. That'll make it a little bit easier. Mine, I put them six inches from the top and bottom. And now we attach the two pieces together. It might be a little bit tricky to do on your own, but it shouldn't be too bad if you dri drilled all your pilot holes first. Just go through and screw them in together. I've already messed up, actually, because you want to be, you want to cut all your MDF or plywood or whatever it is, keeping in mind that some of it's going to overlap a little bit, like this, one piece might be on top, and I've overcompensated, so on one side there's going to be about an inch or so sticking out. Once you've out. got all of your side pieces put together, attach them to the bottom. This is the time I would recommend you attach casters. I didn't attach mine till later, and it became a lot harder to do. So once you have your pieces attached to the side, attach the casters to the bottom. Now we start cutting the rock sole. Make sure you wear gloves as this isn't really the type of thing that you want to handle excessively. Go through, measure it out, and cut it with any sort of serrated knife. A bread knife works perfectly. I just picked up a kitchen knife from Goodwill for $2. As you cut each piece of rock sole, put it in. Don't wait to cut them all at the same time as you might end up mistaking which one is which. As I was designing mine, I forgot that the wall piece and floor piece shouldn't take up the same spot, so I ended up having to make some last minute cuts. Take a large piece of cloth, something like a queen size bed sheet will work fine, that's what I use, and try to get it in the center of your isolation cabinet to cover all the rock sole and hold it up. I ended up taking my leftover piece of MDF, wrapping it up in the center and dropping it down and pulling it over. Once you've got it all there, staple gun it into place. And repeat the exact same process with the lid before you attach it with hinges. That extra one and a half inches that I had sticking out actually ended up being very helpful. That's how I attached the hinges on the outside. That way I didn't have to screw into the side of the MDF, and it ended up being a pretty fluid mechanic. Once you've finally got it built, there's only one thing left to do. Test it out. There you go. There's how to build and design an isolation cabinet for your speaker cab. If you have any suggestions on how I could have done the process better, by all means let me know down in the comments. Hopefully we'll be able to help out other people as they build their own. If you have anything that you wanted to see, any plans or perhaps videos of me building it, let me know in this description as well and I'll be glad to follow up. Until then, I hope that this has been helpful and informative. Thank you for watching.